Fight or Die show. I am your host, Randy Lee Boslaw. On today's episode, we have a very interesting guest. His name is Terry Earthwin Nichols. He has written, I think he said about six books now, and I am so excited to welcome him onto the show. So welcome, Terry. I'm so glad that you are on the show. Thanks, Randy. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So let's just start with who you are. Give everybody a little brief who you are. Well, that's, uh, do we have a couple of three hours? Just kidding. <laughs> uh, I grew up uh, thinking that I was a mainstream uh, American white boy. And when I was 45 years old, I found out that I'm Native American and found my tribe and joined it and all that. And that's what Earthwind is, you know? Okay. And Earthwind is a tribal name. And if you were to Google Terry Nichols, you, you'd find about 20,000 of my f closest friends. <laughs> However, if you Google Terry Earthwind Nichols, boom, you got one in the world. So it works out great for branding and stuff. Yes. Uh, I'm a retired sailor man, uh, joined the Navy to see the world. And I did exactly that for 20 years, had a ball. Wow. And then I have been a multi-serial entrepreneur, corporate type. Uh, I've had quite a series of backgrounds. Right now, uh, my business partner and I, my wife, uh, we run a global company on six continents, 16 countries, 26 US states, and six languages. Um, and we have four divisions in that company, and it's uh, not even 10 years old. So it's wow. done well. And, yes. Uh, uh, what is it that you do? Well, we have four divisions. One division is I created a question and answer sequence that stops imposter syndrome, PTSD, suicide ideation, all that stuff in one session right here on Sky, uh, Skype or Zoom. And um, then uh, we opened up uh, the Earthwind Academy. It's to for coaching and uh, classes, webinars, certification for people who want to do the repetitive behavior cellular regression process, which is trademarked. And uh, then uh, the third one, which is what my business partner is working on right now, book in 30 days. She runs that. Oh, nice. Uh, she uh, has a very unique way of, of creating and help them self-publish a book in 30 days, uh, starting with um, an hour uh, interview right on, right on uh, Zoom and transcribing it and some other things. But yeah. in, the, in, in a month, you got one of these books to awesome. sell at the back of the room, right? So it's just great. Then the fourth one, I'm quite creative when it comes to uh, marketing strategy, thought leadership, and things like that. So we open up a division called Consortium, where I do uh, marketing strategies. Uh, we have a new business model that we are introducing to the world, where uh, it's achievement-based, uh, not uh, goals and sales quotas and those kinds of things that get missed too easily. Yep. Uh, well, I'll give you a perfect example. For you that are listening in today, think about a time when you you really achieved something, how great that felt, right? And then think about somebody you know and respect, maybe a boss or supervisor or leader of the company acknowledges that achievement. Wow, what a feeling. Now replicate that through an entire corporation. Wow. People who are achieving regularly don't get sick. They don't burn out. And listen to this one. They don't leave the company. And that is huge. I've worked for a few places and the turnover rate, woo! Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if everybody's happy, you know, you don't have any grumps running around because yep. everybody's excited. Uh, they exceed their sales goals. They don't pick up their cell phones 20 times a day and check their email, mm. Yep. you know, because they're fully engaged in this vision that has been created by the company. So that's what we do. That's fantastic. And all right, so do you speak six languages or it's just you have staff that speak six languages? I have staff that speak six languages. <laughs> I, I, I fumble through Spanish. I, one of my uh, duty stations in the Navy, in fact, that's where my daughter was born, was Puerto Rico. So oh. for three and a half years, I was right in uh, the Spanish culture. And, okay. and so uh, I, I, I can walk around the streets and... Uh, with, with the 
my prowess. But uh, yeah, I have uh, practitioners in eight countries and they do fine in, in various countries. <laughs> Uh, well, that's languages. good. That's good. Um, all right. So you talked about imposter syndrome, and I know that's not an often talked about mental health. So how about you tell everybody what that is? Well, imposter syndrome is an anxiety disorder, which is really, uh, it goes along the line of PTSD because it triggers like PTSD and it is repetitive like PTSD. And people who are who are uh, suffering from imposter syndrome, they uh, quite regularly have anxiety attacks or up at night, uh, wondering if somebody is going to expose them, or you know they're in their office working uh, at at work and somebody knocks on the door in a different way than normal. They get excited and, and, and afraid because this is the this is the moment they're going to be found out to be a fraud and those kinds of things. And what we found uh, over the last decade of working with people with repetitive behaviors, imposter syndrome is a behavior like okay. PTSD and all the rest of them. And we treat it as such. And across the behavioral board and scientists all agree behaviors can be modified. However, yes. you got to find the, where the behavior comes from. What we help them do is use the five senses as inventories of a memory rather than have the person go to a memory and tell us a story. Okay. We have them go to the memory, freeze frame it into a photograph. Here's the key. No motion equals no emotion. So the mm. memory is neutral. And to uh, use an alternate neural pathway back in uh, to the back of the brain where they can move forward uh, to find an amnesic memory in early childhood. We use the five senses as inventory. If you and I were sitting on the end of a dock uh, at grandma and grandpa's lake cabin and you've spent the last five summers there, there isn't a stick or a rock you don't know the location of, okay? Yes. Especially if you're about four, five, six years old. And so, if I'm sitting there and you cannot remember anything on the left side of you, that's very unusual. Or let's say you smell cotton candy out on the end of the dock. Possible, just not likely. Yeah. You know, so there's certain little indicators in that that help us go from a first memory to a second and ultimately a third memory in early childhood. And the, the client actually walks in the back door it's much more complicated than that but it's yeah. an easy way to say it they walk into the back door of this amnesic memory that they have not uh uh been present with in all this time mm -hmm. and most importantly the person who was responsible for that creation whether that's the face of a driver who ran over a dog mm -hmm. right if you're a little kid, that's been very traumatic. And if you're pre-language, uh, you can have an amnesic event from it. Now, there's there's other things like uh, personal attacks and things like that. Yeah. Uh, parents fighting constantly yeah. have, have created those events. Because a little child, if you have no language skills, you can't just, hey, you guys, you're scaring the hell out of me. Yeah. You know? uh, you know, you just go into this area. And if it's, you know, the idea of uh, amnesia is to protect you from recalling the memory. Yes. So it's not, there's no disease there. Nothing's broken. It's protecting. The problem with that is, is not only that memory, but all the memories in that area are also protective now. So you yeah. have no recall. Often, We'll have uh, clients who don't remember anything except before first grade or three years old or whatever. Mm -hmm. Even if they see a photograph of themselves, they refuse to believe it's them. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, uh, I was one of those. Uh, I, I absolutely refuse to believe that that three month old kid in my father's arms on grandpa's ranch was me. Absolutely, no, that's not me. Until I went through the CR process session, and that's totally me. So All right. it's, it's, it's really an amazing thing that we've tried, uh, uh, discovered mm -hmm. and further, uh, further developed, uh, Sigmund Freud was a, a psychologist 
uh, in Germany a hundred years ago, and he was close. Yes. He had the idea that people's behaviors as adults started as children. Yes. He wasn't sure where to look or whatever. And then he got short circuited because he was using hypnosis and it became outlawed because uh, bad people were getting good people to go steal for them. Oh, so that I never heard that his, one. Yeah, yeah, it was a big deal. Uh, Austria and, and Germany outlawed it for like 40 years. Wow. And so he started playing with cocaine to try and get his uh, clients high and get them back there. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out so well. He had a couple of uh, failures. So he started experimenting with himself and became an addict and eventually uh, committed suicide in 1939. Oh, but wow. what he was looking for was that alternate neural pathway back to uh, that point in time where the behavior began, what mm -hmm. we call the active block or the driver. Yes. And so we found it. So Dr. Freud, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you always have have to have somebody lay that groundwork right yeah so let's well take i didn't it... even know he did that until just a year ago oh wow. i was reading okay. another book and in the book that they talked about freud and i went well what do we have ah, here interesting yes yes quite interesting yeah. so let's take it back you said that you had suffered from imposter syndrome ah. so tell us about that Self-sabotage uh, is one part of it. You know, you get, I was very successful and then I'd self-sabotage and fail before I got caught, right? Uh, okay. So the driver actually was imposter syndrome. And uh, there, was, there was many times in my 20s and, and 30s, even 40s and 50s that I would lay awake at night, uh, my loved one right beside me snoring away and I'd be absolutely terrified that I'm going to be found out to be a fraud. Was uh, there any particular um, reason why? Like what thing were you scared of being found out for being a fraud for? Or just anything? Anything. Okay. Just being a fraud. Okay. And that can be very, pretty, uh, pretty strenuous. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so... Um, I knew that there was just something wrong. I yeah. could not, I have never ever bought into the, the thought that this is just who I am. I don't believe it. And I never did. So when I was helping somebody over Skype um, back in 2009, um, a hunch came to me to have her close her eyes and uh, tell me what you smell. Smells the number one uh driver for recall memories okay? okay and triggers okay so i knew that already just uh in my adult life and so i was helping her with some issues as a commission stephen minister that's a one-on-one -on -one crisis ministry out of st louis non-denominational okay. and so uh through her closing her eyes and and telling me what she smelled she just freaked out she popped her eyes open she said oh, oh my god i smell gas there must be a fire. And I go, oh, relax. Well, yeah, but this is an electric building. And I go, well, okay. There's, a, there's probably a reason why you didn't smell that gas until I ask you. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, do you smell it now? Well, actually, no. Well, good then. Just take a minute, take a few deep breaths, close your eyes again, because I knew closing your eyes gets you more present with your inner yes. self. You're not watching the other person or the clock or anything Yeah, else. that's why I tell people close your eyes when we're doing yoga in herself. There you go. And so uh, I had her close her eyes again. And I said, Okay, see if you can smell the gas again. And she says, I do. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Go find a memory where you smell that gas. And she did. Oh, okay. so over the course of five to seven hours a week for about two and a half, three months, what we now call repetitive behavior, cellular regression was born. Okay. She was a lifelong schizophrenic, been uh, multiple times in a psych ward, uh, estranged by her family, multiple medicines that she took every day. Mm -hmm. None of that anymore. Wow, very nice. And so, for over 10 years, no additional uh, emotional uh, trauma either. That's wonderful. How did you get over your imposter syndrome? I'm assuming you're over it now. I sure am. Well, <laughs> uh, you can't do it to yourself. 
this process okay. you can't you can't do it to yourself so um i was helping other people we started out um i wanted to make sure my co coaching clients had every opportunity to succeed through our coaching programs mm -hmm. so i had them go through this first so that if there was anything back there we could neutralize it and and increase their opportunity for success well uh they started asking i'd like to learn this and i go well i made it up i'm not sure if i can uh teach it or whatever so i was talking to my coach one day and she says you don't do woo woo you don't smoke and mirrors and none of that stuff right you don't play yeah. music nothing and i go no she goes well then you can teach it yeah and i go well hmm. i'll get a couple of my clients who want to learn and see if they do and so i taught them and that was a good thing but man the first time they had a successful cr i went i got something here i yeah. got something some years later i had a birth defect that needed correcting in my heart and and uh it caused an aneurysm on my ascending artery. Oh. so someday became house tuesday and, yeah uh, but I was really worried about that because I was worried that not that I, so much I was going to, I pipe could die. It's CR would die with me, what we call CR. Yes. And so my wife says, well, why don't you take uh, four or five of us uh, practitioners and teach us everything you know? Mm -hmm. Then if something happens, it can still move forward. Yeah. So, you know, that's a good idea. So, I took five of my superstars and they all said, yes, I'd love to know what you know. And mm -hmm. I took them all through that and, and uh, certified them as masters. So now they can teach it and everything else. So that's how really how the whole thing got started. It's me trying to find out me. Well, about three years after I got uh, my masters taken care of, I found one of my masters was really good. Okay. And so... I asked her to take me through the CR process and she did. And she was help, had, was able to get me back and, and find out that first memory. Wow. And which was, which if you was, don't mind sharing. I was sexually assaulted by my aunt oh, at, four, that's awful. at four months old. And she even, she even hinted uh, all of my life and into my adult life uh, uh, that you know, if she had her way, I would be her son right now and not her nephew because she wanted to marry my father uh, oh. more, more than my mom did. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, she got a little weird. And uh, I still have yes. the memory. Absolutely. My five senses. I smelt her, her uh, cologne or perfume or whatever she had on, some baby mm -hmm. powder. Uh, the smell of her. She had me between her legs. Oh, uh, wow. So it, it, it's vivid, but it, it, it has no emotional value. Yes. And that it neutralized the protection device that kept me from remembering that event. So now I don't have self-sabotaging behavior. I don't have the imposter syndrome. All of that is neutralized. And we have a way of, you know, we're emotional people. Emotional things happen to us in our life. Yes. What, you know, after uh, an event uh, comes by, uh, you know, something could trigger you someday. Or so you smell something or you remember something or you see somebody, right? Uh, we have a way of asking three questions. We won't go into it here because it takes yeah. a little bit of time. Uh, but at the end of those three questions, you're completely out of your anxiety. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that not only have you seen it help other people, but you've experienced it. So firsthand knowledge that it works. Yeah, so amazing. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and you so you've said a lot that imposter syndrome is linked in with PTSD. So does that mean that you also suffered from PTSD? Yeah, probably. Imposter syndrome is really a modification of PTSD because they're both tr uh, trigger off of usually a single event or a single behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, that goes on and on and on and on and on. And it's exactly the same as suicide ideation, alcoholism. We've treated alcoholics, lifelong alcoholics, who are perfectly fine uh, in that uh, you have no control because you can't go to the memory and shut it off. Mm 
because mm-hmm. you don't know where the memory is and you don't even know what it is you know yeah so uh the the repetitive thoughts continue which is the same thing as ptsd okay and and when we take somebody through the cr process a great example is a vet that contacted me uh uh with a loaded uh glock to his head he said oh my goodness uh, i'm locked and loaded you can't you can't help me i'm doing myself right now and i said i'm a fellow vet and i've stood on the edge of a 28 story building i know where you are right now mm-hmm. just listen to me make the weapon safe disengage the magazine and put it on the floor on either side of you magazine on one side and the gun on the other pick it up and use it whenever you like and just stay with me. Four hours later, we got up on Skype. Four hours later, we found out what happened to him when he was a kid. And that was 19 or 19, 2015, somewhere in there, 2014. Okay. He has had no more suicide ideation. We, wow. we see each other regularly. Here's the kicker. Okay. He owns no guns anymore. There's no weapons in his house. Wow. That's okay. awesome. All right, let's take this back for a second. You said you've been 28 stories up on the edge. Yeah. What did that, what was that like? I was as calm as I am sitting here talking to you right now, Randy. I was done. There was no, uh, I can't take it anymore, blah, blah, blah. I was past all of that. I was done. You know, I got up on the top of the condo building where I I was living. I stepped over the... uh, safety barrier and was on the edge and just as calm i was not breathing heavy i was just done now you call this whatever you want ladies and gentlemen that are listening today you too randy is a voice from behind me said turn around i have work for you to do and i turned around and there was nobody there but Mm -hmm. i got off that roof and i never went back and within within four months Repetitive behavior cellular regression was born. So wow. Yes, somebody had work for me to do. Now you call it whatever you like. Yeah. You know, I had a psychic event or whatever you want to blame it on. That voice was as clear as I'm speaking right now. Turn around. I have work for you. And I did. And I never looked back. Wow. Yeah. I was, that was going to be my follow-up question was how did you come off? But you said that somebody told you. Was not your time. You've got you got to go to work. Yeah. Wow. Other things for me to do. That is very amazing. So, what would you tell somebody listening right now if they're going through a difficult time? What would you tell them? I would invite them, uh, particularly if I knew something of their story. Mm-hmm. I would invite them to go to my website, evolutionaryhealer.com, or Google me. Anything, and I'm the only one in the world. So YouTube, social media, websites, yep. everything on me. White papers that I've published. Uh, go to the website web and uh, go to the CR process tab and read all you like. There's white pages there. There's interviews of some of my people. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's all the information that, that you would want to know about this question and answer sequence. Uh, and uh, when you're ready, there's a button right there to for a, a reach out appointment and talk to me, give me a call. Uh, or, or if you know one of my people, talk to them. That's fine too. Big thing there, talk, right? Have to talk it out. During all of this imposter syndrome and suicide ideation, did you ever feel stigmatized to talk about it? Yeah, I never spoke about it uh, until I was well into this process of my background. Okay. I never spoke about um, my uh, uh, thoughts of suicide and all those stuff until uh, the company was formed and we're out rolling and it was time to get up on stage and tell my story and and uh, present so 95 or 96 percent uh except for last year and this year yeah. of our revenue comes from me speaking on the stage nationally and internationally about the process and my story and 
mm-hmm. and, and uh, what we're doing. Why didn't you talk about it? Was it something internally or was it something externally that was stopping you? Internally. What would that be? I don't want anybody to know this. Why didn't you want anybody to know it? I have that kind of personality and you can tell by my voice. Um, I, I, I am, I'm easily endeared by people and I didn't want to let them down. Yeah, I get that. That was a big thing for me too, is I didn't want other people to be let down or for me personally, it was, I didn't want them to see me as weak because if I was weak, then I couldn't do what they needed to be done. Sure, yeah, Yeah. I get that. Very interesting. So you've already said your website um, and you're on all sorts of social media, correct? All sorts of cards. And if somebody was trying to Google you, are they just looking for your name or how are they finding you if they're looking for you? Terry Earthwind Nichols. There's only one on the internet. Excellent. And I will be putting links in the description. So you can definitely find those down below. And finally, where can people find your books? My books are at Amazon. Again, Terry Earthwind Nichols. If you just... Go to Amazon and and then type in uh, your search bar, Terry Earthwind Nichols. You get all six of them or something like that. I've co-written a couple of books too. Excellent. Uh, and they're available in eBooks, like the one over here, my shoulder here with the green, Profiling for Profit, What Crossed Arms Don't Tell You. It's how to read what I'm doing right now with my head as I'm talking to you. And you can, you can read somebody's... Uh, subliminal muscle movement on what uh, in real time in a conversation or a presentation and know whether or not you're getting through to them oh okay. my now i'm so, wondering what am i saying with my body <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be talking if it was uh, negative so don't worry about it excellent and and you know uh like i say uh, it's today through actually i think it was yesterday uh through april 7th I have the ebook uh, on on special, so people can get it for I don't know buck ninety nine or whatever. But oh, cool. I recommend it to salespeople or anybody that 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 speaks a lot to a lot of people, and mm-hmm. and have it in your phone for a quick reference. It's a very short read. It's only like eighty pages. Oh, nice. Yes, so, nice and short. Uh, yeah, what I tell executives, I said take it on the airplane with you to for vacation. Yeah. And then when you get back, get 50 copies for your sales team because they're going to want it. Yeah, excellent. All right. Is there any other last minute or things that you want the audience to know? Just know that, that if uh, you want a new model for your business, this is an incredible, the consortium is an incredible tool and it's available on the website. Uh, including a vision strategy roadmaps, very cool. But if you're suffering from imposter syndrome or suicidal thoughts or anything like that, and you're through talking to people, you're at that point of enough is enough, reach out. Google me and reach out. Excellent. I'm a really nice guy. And you sound like a really nice guy. <laughs> if you can be anything, Randy, be kind, right? And, and so um, if I can't help you, I probably know who can. Yes, and that's really important is knowing your limitations and knowing who else can step in. Yeah, we have a great reputation in the coaching world, for instance, in health and wellness, and, and really it's expanding into many industries uh, that to go see Terry and Linda, Linda's my, my partner and my wife, go see Terry and Linda, because if they don't know the answer, they know who does. And that's, that's really a nice reputation to have. That is. Well, thank you so very much for being on the show. Thank you. This is great. And uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon. Okay, great. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the show. Imposter syndrome is so interesting. And I think Terry explained it really, really well. And it's not a syndrome that is talked about very often. So if that piqued your interest at all, check out Terry's website, do some research on Google. It's very interesting concept. I listened to an audio book called Take Control of Your Life by Mel Robbins, and she talks about imposter syndrome in that book as well. So it's very interesting. That was kind of the first time that I had experienced 
uh, anyone talking about imposter syndrome. And now with Terry having explained it the way he did, it's really eye-opening, especially that link between imposter syndrome and PTSD. Very, very interesting. So reach out. I have put the links in the description down below. So reach out, be sure to follow Terry on his social media as well. Give the video a like and subscribe to the channel, please. And thank you. And, and remember, the only way to end the stigma of mental health is to speak openly and honestly.